Do you like conversation on a variety of topics? Feel like no one wants to talk about the things that interest you? Tired of only hearing the same political, sports, or catastrophe talk? Yeah, we feel that way too. Join two high-functioning geeks as they discuss just about anything under the sun. We can't tell you what we'll be talking about each week because we don't know where our brains will take us. It will be an interesting conversation, though, so hang on and join us. Here comes the Relentless Geekery. Got a nice little rainbow halo for you today. Yeah, there, there you go. go. You find the pot of gold. Exactly. Being the world's biggest leprechaun, you know. <laughs> okay. Sorry, let me do a couple things here. Save this and get out of it. I often try to return as much memory to my system as possible so that there's no, oh, and then um, I had stopped responding. <laughs> okay, I think we're good. You all good? Uh, all right, so kick off our, our discussion. I had an interesting revelation this past week, past couple of days. When you mentioned that, I was curious as to what would it, what would merit the word revelation. Yes, <laughs> and I figured you'd like that. Now, as an Apple guy, you pretty much buy your machines, and that's what you get. That this is what you have: a couple choices of memory and uh, processor. You don't buy parts and put it together. That, you oh, know that's. that's you you can they're opening things up now, but for a long time it was yes. uh, and only all uh, authorized dealers and stuff like that. Right. That's right. Okay, so I talked about my computer parts I bought. I got a good deal. I got some you know a couple generation old stuff, whatever, yeah. um, which I'm still working on. Uh, just haven't had yeah. the time, and I did get it together, and it, it wasn't responding. I'm like, oh great, what didn't I hook up correctly? It's not like. I have about five places. Everything goes into one spot. But the processor did not have pins. It just has flat contacts. So you can't put it in and bend pins. That's cool. I guess they fixed that, which was I, we mentioned a couple of times ago. That was like the most the most nerve wracking part of doing yeah. any system build was one pin gone. And I've just blown hundreds of bucks. You right. Know what I mean? oh, right. But the problem okay. was. There's four <clears throat> positions that it could fit in. And, you know, the very helpful documentation pictures that come with the motherboard and the processor do not help to make sure you get it in the right spot. So I'm like, Often huh. They have a notch on one side or they have it that, you know, there's like a little dividing line, but it's not right in the center. So you can kind of see. But yeah, you would hope. obvious or you would have done it. It's exactly. symmetrical. It, I mean, it, I looked at the same all around. Like, what the heck? Why would you do that? So okay. I'm not sure if I put the processor on the right slabs, <laughs> but, you yeah. know, so, I, but I thought it was interesting that there's no pins anymore, at least for the, you know, uh, I got the AMD. So, okay. yeah. That's why like, I, I, I haven't, I haven't swapped a CPU in a long time. I've regularly still done memory video cards, whatever Apple has allowed you to do. I've often put a new hard drive in or something like that or added memory but they they when they did allow it in various different things like the the mac minis or uh mac books it was often you just take the back off as you were saying there's only one where to, one place to put it you know it's not like there's five choices for where you put memory make sure you put your little anti-static strap on and just be careful right and i've had even things like changing out a battery and stuff like that where they really do say hey those you know the the, the leads not leads um holes can be live in fact i'll take a long time the the worst thing that i remember reading about that could have happened to me was way back in like the mac mini days where you actually had the crt within the housing of the computer oh I, that really could like blow you across the room with yes. uh, extra charge so i was always when you were doing any kind of thing in the old in the old original generation macintoshes or whatever had a monitor that's where they had in big bold you know 18 point letters you need to be careful and do not treat this like it's inert. This carries a charge that'll put you on your back. So yeah, right. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so okay. you know, I'm sorry it's changed. not working for you yet, but hopefully you only got three more things to try. You know, one per each orientation. 
we'll right. see I, I, unlucky <laughs> yeah i don't know because it, it what didn't beep or anything so i'm like well that's weird you know so i stripped it back down and you know is it shorting out on the the case i'm like i don't see anywhere that the pin yeah. you know the screws are they usually design it so you can screw it in and it doesn't you know but so exactly we'll see i, I, I as you know i stripped the screw on uh working on colleen's uh, macbook air and i'm i'm this week i'm taking it over to the genius because i i i don't have the tool like you said they've got to have some kind of special guy that will let me grab the top of it without having to actually unscrew it i don't have that but they must so we'll see what happens yeah so. i've got the same problem with the right blinker on my car i can't get to it because of the where it's at very yeah, uh, yeah. not designed they don't want you to mess with it so okay. there we but go. anyway what else is going on so actually uh just over the last two days went to the motley fools um yearly conference you know yes. the, the smarter richer happier conference and very good they they it's a very good combination of um main sessions where pretty much any investor wants to hear um, how to do it? How does Motley Fool do it? Um, what are the kinds of things that are going on in the modern world that would make this worth talking about on a yearly basis instead of read the book, it's all in there, you know, that kind of thing. They always have uh, good um, guest interviews. So in this case, it was like the president of, of, of Trex, which are a, a very successful composite materials maker, like for decks and stuff like that. Um, Morgan Housel, who wrote The Psychology of Money, a really good book about like how the world works and how it portrays itself through this exchange of value and how your mind doesn't always work well in terms of uh, we're funny about money. Um, and right along those same lines, they had Annie Duke on as the final um, keynote interview. If, if, if Annie Duke is that was actually a professional poker player. Um, yeah. She's the daughter of Richard Lederer of Mensa book fame. So yes. I actually met at one point and so forth. And she's, she's wonderful. She's very well-spoken. Um, she she um talks about you know so you kind of uh, pulled away from the uh um poker world and she goes yep i quit and the reason she said it very clearly like that is because she's written a book about quitting about that one of the things that people really have are all kinds of limitations mentally for where they they don't think of a situation in terms of what are the odds of what different ways it can go forward when will I know if something is continuing to do well or not? How will I prepare myself for not just saying, come on back to me, 23. I really got to make this money back. You know, she approaches it in, in seemingly many ways from a, a gambling point of view, but not really gambling like, you know, roll the dice and hope. It's right. more, what do you do if you're a good poker player? You figure, what's the money on the table? What's pot odds? What's what am I worth? Uh, what's my chance of improvement? What do I see everybody else's chance of improvement? What could they be betting on? Those are my competitors. Very much every single decision is not here's hoping. It's very much like, what are the numbers behind it? And not hunches. And so she applies that, extrapolates from that into the world of all kinds of different decisions. Are you in a financial situation? Are you in a relationship situation? Whatever else it might be. And it's not published yet. It's doing out, do out in October. I think it might be available virtually, like Kindle-wise and so forth, but not as a book yet. And gosh, you know, I want to read a book. I don't want to get the digital version yet, so I haven't gotten it yet. But that's one of the nice things about going to this conference is it gives me all kinds of good leads to not just what's the compressed half hour or hour version, of, but... I want to I want to read what they recommend what they've written. There's some really bright people right. there. Nice. Um, okay, so that was kind of was a good good use of my last day and a half. You know what I mean? That they and a, a nice variety. One of the best sessions available that was a lot of what people think about a, a conference like this would be. So did you get any hot stock tips? And they had a very good section on uh, the semiconductor world the current one and what we're looking to in the future. And as you might imagine, it's not only about technology, um, especially from a financial standpoint, it's not what kind of technical miracles are we working, but there's global politics involved. Some of the most important companies that do this are Taiwan Semiconductor and ASML. And they're like, put Taiwan into that equation. You mean that little island off the coast of China that China is continually circling with warships and saying, we don't really think you're your own country. We think you're part of us. And Nancy Pelosi just visited and it was, oh my God, that's a provocation. Without going into any of the politics as the why and the wherefore, it absolutely does impact the business plans of these places. 
that's a strategic enough partner technically that that might be one of those things that other countries would be willing to go to war for because they can't lose access to those the whole world nowadays uh, cars nowadays have like three thousand dollars worth of various different mm -hmm. computer chips in them because it's not just running your instrument panel it's everything about how you drive and how you steer and how you do your your hybrid engines and all that kind of stuff so one of the I don't want you to be bouncing around so much, but these are some of the things that not only they talked about, but that I thought, you know, we just had very interesting steps forward here in the United States for making it so that we're not dependent on uh, foreign, uh, uh, whether they're allies or, or um, enemies, for things that matter, like those chips. And so there's a whole bunch of the CHIPS Act is all about returning some of that, not just farming it out, and then having it be, wow, so supply chain disruption over these last two years has meant we couldn't get cars. We couldn't right. make cars, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so the fact that they named like Taiwan Semiconductor and, and uh, Lumentum, specific companies that I kind of want to be in because of all the various different trends, the Motley Fool is very good about, so here's the various different trends we see. There's more AI coming up. There's more uh, renewable energy coming up. And what are the companies that are best positioned to make that real and that therefore you should put your money in and bet on them? So I like having a lot of my stuff that I'm already into. It was confirmed. You know what I mean? As I think I mentioned before, part of my investment philosophy is I'm, I'm buying the future. I want right. to create this better future. And so to have that be that not only did I learn about most of them from The Motley Fool, but they still think it's a good bet two, three years in compared to when I first jumped on it. It's it's reassuring. You know what right. I mean? It, it's heartening. <laughs> and then to get some new ideas for, okay, next time I have uh, you know my 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 little bets that I can make, I'll expand my portfolio and include some of these guys as well. And, and um, what you said definitely goes with that uh, old uh, give a man a fish, teach a man the fish philosophy, because someone will say, oh, what's well, a good stock tip? Well, I could tell you five of them, but the minute those start to go down, what do you know to do? You don't know what to do. Do you keep it? Do you cancel it? Are they going up? You're getting this education right. to evaluate and make your own stuff. So that's way better in the long run. Stephen, absolutely. And in fact, that's that's one of the underlying things about virtually every uh, uh, discussion, interview, presentation that they have is, um, here's what the numbers say about how the market will work so that you can win. You have to be in for a longer time period than in and out in six months. You have to, you're aware that when the market goes down, it goes down rapidly, but always comes back and higher than where it was. And that's proved by 110 years worth of data now or something like that, you know? And even when you look at the big disruptive events, the black swan events, like um, the housing crisis or the war or or we, we've been, one guy did a great presentation, mentioned in his presentation about, um, when you look at, oh, we got massive inflation, you know, historic inflation, you know, we've never seen this before. And he was happy to say, actually, we have. And we have quotes from the people saying, this is just like the inflation that we saw in 1890, or in 1910, or in 1930s. You know what I mean? So it's very reassuring to know that capitalism, uh, uh, the, uh, the um, innovation that brings about progress, almost always, there's, there's all these ratcheting upward. You know what I mean? It ratchets. You will get your downturns and it's, you know, 5% every year and it's, you know, 10% every three years and 20% where they talk about what it, does that equal a recession? Does that equal inflation or stagflation? But that if you buy and hold, you can have some confidence if you bought a good stock, if you bought a stock that really is and name the fundamental criteria, it's makes a good product. It's got a moat around it so that others can't easily jump in and compete. It's got good leadership and they're invested in the company because they've got stock and skin in the game and all different kinds of things. Who are their competitors? Um, when you make those kind of fundamental choices, you don't really play the technician game. I, I have any number of friends that, that they're really, especially because I'm a computer guy, they're looking for what's the algorithm that'll tell me that I could get in and out day trading wise. And that's kind of at the weird micro aspect, but even they're like, I put in stop loss orders so that when I've made enough money, I'm going to pull back and, and, you know, celebrate my wins. And like, wow, I, I kind of was pretty sure that we continue to go up. I don't know that I want to get out. I don't want to get out when it's going down, but I also don't want to get up when it's going up and there's no real end in sight. Right. So it, it, <laughs> um, 
I have a big portfolio. I have more than 100 stocks, but every single one of them out of the 9,000 stocks, and maybe I'm going low, there might be like 19,000 worldwide, out of all those companies that have stories behind them and numbers behind them, what can we learn? How much information is publicly available, baked into the price of the stock, so that one of the, one of the things that the Motley Fool is good for, and I, you know, kind of, I hope you don't mind, I'm not trying to shill for them, but so much of how I think they really do let you get ahead of the market. It's kind of like, you know, you can... You can't beat Vegas unless you learn to count cards and really look for what you do know. And even then, you're only like a half percent up. But a half percent, if you do it right over time, is still a win. And right. Motley Fool really seems to be good about how to identify those companies that can beat the S&P 500. It's not only buying into an index fund, which is a way to make money six to nine percent over the course of time forever. Um it's a way of being able to maybe just get ahead of the market in terms of what industries are you in? What companies are you in? Um, different approach, different approach than just you know, kind of buy the market with an index and ride it out. Right. So I'm one, uh, one of the joys of the conference is I'm reheartened. You know what I mean? My portfolio was down half since the height that it was at about a year and a half ago. And yet I'm seeing signs of recovery. It's ratchetingly recovering. It's not like, okay, we're going back up, get on the elevator. It's giving me still, well, I went up this many thousand and then I went down half of that, but it's it's going back up. And and I especially that idea of the mindset of like don't panic. You know, you really should never be making these decisions on the take basis your towel. of towel. Exactly. Take your towel. Exactly that. You know, be a real hoopy fruit. Um <laughs> so I really like that. Um the other thing that I, I think that I mentioned that before coming back home to go to this conference, Colleen and I were in Philadelphia this last weekend for an extended yeah. getaway. And the brief thing was we had bought like a hotel room through a Sonder that we, I wasn't able to move the dates or something. And so I was really right, to right. like, no flexibility, but then we showed up and we decided we're not going to eat this money. Let's go do a getaway weekend. Even if your business uh, meeting is not the precipitating event for that. So the uh, the hotel was wonderful. It's not even like a room. It's actually a little apartment. So we had all the room we needed and closet space and a full working kitchen and nice, modern, not, you know, like old fixtures where you turn on and here's hoping the rust water doesn't come out first. All very modern, good Wi-Fi, et cetera. Um, right in the heart of the city. And I had not really spent, I, I teleported in and out of Philadelphia before to do specific things like go to a concert. Um, so we were total touristy. We There's all kinds of cool mixture of historic sites as well as more modern skyscrapers, you know, but you go to um, City Hall and there's William Penn's and his hat. And for a while they had the edict that you couldn't build taller than that. So there's this nice little multiple block area where everything is relatively short building wise. And then whatever that cordon <laughs> that they had that it had to be that right after that the skyscrapers rear up because it's the financial district and there's all kinds of things going on but they you know we went to independence hall and the liberty bell and the constitution center and the nice. museum of the american revolution and just um i don't know if you had a chance to do it but i kind of like uh the country's not always been in the best of shape the last 20 going on 40 years and so I'm not as moved as I used to be when I see the flag go up and I put my hand over my heart and sing the anthem. But this kind of stuff, to read about the incredible brilliance of who framed the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, the incredible bravery of people who said, so what, that this is the biggest army in the world, the biggest empire the world has ever known since the Romans. We're going to thumb our nose at him and say we declare ourselves to be you know, these truths are self-evident. All men are created. It, it's, it really is reaffirming as an American to see those are real American values. Those are not founding father control-oriented bullshit. It's all about freedom and all about the, the value of every person and all about we didn't get it all right. So we built in mechanisms to make it right. And some of those things that we've done over the course of years, little things like freeing slaves and giving everyone the vote it's it's they have incorporated that so it's not just the musty history of it they've really said here's how this has worked pretty well this incredible experiment of the united states continues to succeed if if we do it if we work the rule of law if we work the principles of life liberty and the pursuit of happiness and hey anything that's not in line with those maybe that's not 
what the what America is all about. Right. So, um, so did, was, did they have? I've not been in depth in Philadelphia. I've been through there, like you said. Did they have little plaques up, like on this spot, Ben Franklin and stuff like that? Absolutely, they had all kinds of historic houses where you know this is where like uh, there's things that are very commemorated. Betsy Ross, uh, where she lived, Benjamin Franklin's grave. Um, uh, the the there's wonderful historic documents. You know, in, in the essentials area, they really do have uh, the draft working copies, if you will, and I think also some of the finals, the ones that were posted everywhere of the Declaration of Independence, of the Articles of Confederation, and of the Constitution, just like you read about in, in high school history nice. and stuff like that. And, and lots of good people on site that are really knowledgeable about, here's what they did, here's how it happened, here's what they meant by it, you know what I mean? That it's not, it doesn't only stand alone, you have to have a historic context for it. You have to have um, it, it, a lot of people there very knowledgeable, but not... Um, with an agenda of trying to do anything except tell you the truth as far as i could tell you know what i mean it's not that it, it uh so much of this stuff was just wow you walk through the area that they keep the liberty bell and they have all the ways in which the liberty bell has become a symbol not only used by the united states but not only by suffragettes and then uh, civil rights here but also any number of other countries have used hmm. that the the silhouette the picture of the bell as we declare ourselves to be equally free we have a constitution wow. now That's cool. so that was also very heartening to be you're not allowed to touch it but you're allowed to be like within touching distance of it and it's like there it is this multi-ton got a crack in it they so... put a spider in to stop the crack the crack from proceeding further and it's just the, you know i'm not a mystical guy and yet there's <laughs> power there yeah I, that, I mean, that's so old. Yeah. yeah. It sounds yeah. a little bit like the city version of Hale Farm. <laughs> like that. Exactly. <laughs> so, okay. It, you know, but the, the important question is, did you run up the steps like Rocky? And did you go to all the places Nicolas Cage was to find the gold? To do national treasure. It yes. Is, oh, they've, they've moved the Rocky statue from the top of the steps. Oh, to, man. At the bottom of the steps off to the side so the people would stop doing that um we did not <laughs> run up the, so and what we did was you know we walked everywhere it was quite hot it was in the 90s regularly but yeah. and i are relatively hardy so we everywhere that there were the big grassy places um where they have here's the older buildings here's the museums we walked all those malls we walked along the schuylkill river um you know which, which is like you know spelled child kill you know right. what I mean? give him schuylkill <laughs> um and then that's how you get to the um philadelphia museum of art and so but by doing that way you kind of come at it from the side the back instead of the main thing so we did not run up the steps even though I, that's when i was going to philadelphia i'm picturing dun, 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 right. you know what i mean uh, well we didn't do that but we it the, the museum itself also beautiful massive and like they that's where sunflowers is from from van gogh they they really have like wow that's like in books but here it is also right like in distance and i'm you know they um a couple great uh, casting of the thinker one of the eight like original if that's if that's the right word for a copy but the, the, there were eight main castings and we have one here in cleveland and they have one there oh, so cool. All kind and like beautiful collections. They had an armor collection. They had modern and and uh, um, you know, what is it called? Illuminated art. You know where it's very very Christian oriented. Those were the only ones that could sponsor. Uh, the only tons of good stuff to see, and we didn't even see it all. You know what I mean? We did as much as we could. We went to the the Mütter Museum, which if you've heard about it, it's where they have all kinds of um, uh, medical preserved bodies, skulls. And not only normal ones, but especially the abnormalities. So you get to oh, see, wow. oh my God, that's a conjoined twin skeleton. Wow. Or that's a guy that had like a, a cruciferous, cutaneous well, horn growing out of his head and oh, things wow. like that. You so, sure that wasn't Ripley's? I did, you know, honestly, it, they were very straightforward about it, but some of the things were straight out. Oh, come on. You know, that, did they just stick a horn on a goat and call it a <laughs> unicorn? You know, no, it was all real. And I'm it's kind of funny. I really was worried, like, okay, is this gonna be unnerving? I I tend to not watch movies that have such horrific images that then it's in my mind and I can't get rid of it. <laughs> can't because there's it. so many of them there. They have a whole wall of skulls and not 
warped, but just all but all different shapes and sizes. And they had little bios sometimes of, you know, this person really was like an idiot. And so they were looking for how do we know from his skull? Is there any way to do it chronologically or by skull size and the various different little measurements you can take? Um, they had uh, they had a thing about Einstein's brain and how it had been taken out of his skull. And like, well, the guy kept it like in a cooler in his house for a while. You know what I mean? Like, wow. thanks for not wrecking it, I guess. You didn't feed it to your dogs or whatever. Um, so that was fascinating because it, it's just like nothing you've ever seen before. You know what I mean? The abnormalities, like that's often how we've learned how does the body work because right. it goes haywire. And then you find out, oh, it really does grow skin cells. But if it grows too many, then you get cancer or whatever right. else it might be. Um, so we, we, like I said, happily touristy, usually, you know, out on our feet, eight, 10, 12 hours catching. We made a point of getting a cheesesteak because that's Philadelphia, right. you know, um, uh, uh, had very, we went for one meal. Colleen is much more the carn carnivore of the two of us. And so we went to a place called Picanha, which is kind of like a fogo de chao. Or it's one of those Brazilian steakhouses where you sit at your table and the, they have a big, like a salad bar where you can get various different side dishes. But then guys emerge from the kitchen with big meat on on spits wow. and they stop at your table and say you know would you like some ribs and they carve some ribs off and you grab it with your little tongs and then there's like 15 different things they bring out wow. so you can get your filet mignon and your bacon wrapped filet mignon and th their specialty which i think was picanha but it's you know, per this particular seasoning style and marinating style and whatever and and you have a little uh what do you, um sorry Let, let's call it a coaster that you can flip red or green, pretty much meaning moss or no moss, you know, more <laughs> or no more. <laughs> and and Colleen, she she's a petite thing, and yet you know when there's good good beef to be had, good meat, good pork. It's I, impressive. I, liked, huh? I had the shrimp. I tried the chicken. She doesn't do those, but we just and and it was luckily on. We went there on like a let's see, was a Friday or Saturday night? I think Friday night. And but so we were expecting to kind of be elbow to elbow, so we were COVID conscious and stuff. And instead, it just wasn't that crowded, so we weren't close to people and we weren't getting like laughed on or whatever. We had a, a nice leisurely, so we hardly ever go food touristing, you know what I mean? We don't mind finding nice places, otherwise, we had a nice Italian place where we had spaghetti and meatballs and we had a pizza and a salad and you know, pretty conventional stuff. But this was not so much our anniversary because that's last month but for our birthdays we really hadn't gone out in july and august and so we said how about if we do a combined big meat night you know the night of too much meat you know that kind of thing <laughs> and just it was it's it's fun once in a while to do the overwhelm you know yeah. what i mean it just was wow this is indulgent as hell and it cost a little bit of money but we it was just what we wanted to do it was just right it so, sounds like the Philadelphia, you know what I mean? Really a good walking city, lots of people all over the place, good diversity, good cobblestone streets, as well as modern. It's a really interesting combination of historic and modern. And I really liked it. So, it sounds like it's one step away from the restaurant at the end of the universe where the cow comes walking out and you <laughs> choose, it asks you what piece you want. <laughs> exactly. Let me just recommend which. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 so just, I, I don't know for, uh, and uh, I, always I'm thinking, of, well, how do we tie this into nerdy? It isn't just like food as indulgence. It really was cool to be like, here's how they're doing history nowadays, where my guess is these museums over the last, in my lifetime, 60 years, they must have started off with just, here's the thing and here's a little plaque about it. But now they have a multimedia extravaganza. They have multiple films that talk about it. They have uh, recreators, you know what I mean? People that nice. come out and interact with things. Here's Here's what it would have been like to work on a sloop in the bay and really um nice and immersive and uh i came i came away with a real appreciation of the facts of it but not in a stodgy way in a very much like hey if you're going to deal with people nowadays that are used to quick cuts in movies you have to do what you need to do to keep their attention to not have it be oh god another plaque you know oh, i'm done i'm done i want to go home I, i'm good with that but <laughs> yeah but that's what i was thinking and i, and I I really liked that they've got ideas about, hey, this is how crowd control works. You know what I mean? If you're going to have, it's a national park or monument or whatever the designation is. So you have to get checked to make sure you don't have weapons or anything that you're going to like throw acid on the constitution or something terrible. Because, you know, there's been 
all you need is one idiot breaking right. the pinata with a sledgehammer and then every other place has to say well how do we idiot proof ourselves how do we maniac proof ourselves yeah. you know that kind of thing now um, i assume <laughs> that they've got to have some like tours or walking tours you know this location this location and uh right. for that because it is a very historical city Exactly. We, I must admit, we didn't seek any of those out. We occasionally walked by them and heard a docent or someone giving a okay. tour. What we did do was, and it's kind of funny because usually you would do this at the start to get the lay of the land everywhere. Instead, towards the end of our last day in town, we hopped on one of the open uh, double-decker buses. And it goes like 26 stops all over downtown historic. And it went to places like it went out to the Philadelphia Museum again. It's like, well, we walked this. We should have taken a ride. But <laughs> it took you all the way to where you can see Camden, New Jersey, across the river oh, from wow. there. Um, uh, and unfortunately, this is kind of our tour guide was, if he was knowledgeable, he didn't share it enough because he was too busy telling his very self-involved stories about what I'm doing in college and what I, you know what I mean? It's just, I just, it, he, what, he wasn't as good as he could have been, but you really got like, here's other famous buildings that I wouldn't have known the name for. And here's why, like when I had mentioned that we were going friends on Facebook had said, Oh, you should go to Macy's because the oldest, biggest still operating uh, organ is there. Oh. And we didn't make it, but now we have, you know, whenever we don't do these things, it's like, well, we have a reason to something go. Something to go, yeah. Okay. And, so and, go oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say something I learned in New Orleans was those tour buses, they circle around. You can get like a full day or a two day pass. So you can jump on it, get the tour and get off where you want. And then get that's back exactly on a different right. one and go around. So there's a, a travel tip that I didn't know till recently. I, I totally, in fact, we were foolish about it because we got on and just did the tour. We could have used it as our shuttle bus for right. the entire city for all the time that we were there. That's exactly right. So we still liked the tour of it. And, and I, was, I will say this, luckily I was very conscious of put on some sunscreen and wear your hat, Al, because when you're in an open double-decker bus, the sun at a 90 degree day is baking you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so I got hot, but luckily not, I really did not get burnt so far as I could tell. No horrible redneck or anything like that, you know? Good. Um, so it, it, I, we have reasons to go back because you didn't get to everything. And yet it not having been there before, it's, it's kind of um, some extrapolation into the future for Colleen and I is we're going to be retired soon. What are we going to do? There's 10 big cities that I'd love to explore like this. Washington, D.C., New York, uh, uh, Boston, Seattle, Portland, whatever else it might be. Hey, we really like this Saunders Hotel. It's right downtown in the heart of things. It was, now I know, don't make a reservation that you're not going to keep, because that was my big dissatisfaction with Saunders, right. was how unworkable they were. But the facility itself was fantastic. So I could see doing that like five-day getaway weekend times 10. You know, whatever those cities are that we want to go to, just go, go to. And in a lot of cases, um, I would like to do it in Chicago because while I was living there, working there, the only time you went to do those things is when somebody came in town and you wanted to show your city off. And Cleveland's kind of like that too. How often do I go to the West Side Market or the Lakeview Cemetery or the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame because someone's come into town? Isn't right. that weird? You know, the Sears Tower. Now I still call it the Sears Tower, even though it's been name changed for like 35 30 years, years yeah <laughs> so, so what is it the willis willis tower yeah Wilshire. um how how parochial of me but that's a kind of a cool idea is there any big city that doesn't have enough cool stuff like that they've all got museums and history and and that kind of stuff that's spending a couple days right in the heart of downtown walk to everything eat a couple nice meals repeat that's a really cool idea for what we'd like to do to see more of the United States that we haven't really explored yet. And you know, so. I found things like uh, TripAdvisor are great for this, but it's sometimes mm -hmm. even the little towns and stuff you travel through. Uh, when mm -hmm. I travel with the kids, we would always try and find little towns and stuff, see what's there and available and, and adjust our schedule or whatever. Cause like, Oh wow, that's a weird museum. Let's check it out. You know, the, the rattlesnake tail museum or something, you know, yeah. you know, you, you get that on the outskirts and sometimes it's fun just to look for those and see exactly. what you can get. I agree. I mean, that that's kind of what we've done. We've, we've done so many big driving vacations that that's the, the mode that I've been in is, you know, find a place, you know, you're going to drive to anything. So find a place on the edge of town where it's a little bit less expensive, but then still make sure you go to the odd museum, the odd historic place, 
the, you know, I don't know, there's all kinds of odd America. Oh, this is the biggest ball of twine. I always ever uses that one, but like we've seen <laughs> all kinds of, you know, biggest gopher statue, you know, here's a, and, and, and we've seen the biggest bison statue and the biggest cow statue. And right. like that, well, you know? <laughs> a little thing that a lot of people don't know about or heard about, it's just uh, you know, like an hour south of me is layman's hardware. I don't know if you've ever okay. been there. It's, yeah. It's like an old general store, old fashioned hardware, and it's huge and sprawling. It has everything. Yes. Exactly. You know, if, if you're looking for like not only royal and metric measurements, but if there was ever an alternate measurement system, I'm sure they've got the bolts and nuts and screws. Yeah. That go with and, that. and if you, you want good I mean? cast iron, they've got that. And, you know, it's the stuff you could live off the grid with, but also things you can use in your kitchen. And yeah. it's just a huge rambling store. Is it down in Amish country or is it close to, right? I think it's it, you know, it very much so. Yeah, it's down uh, yeah. by Worcester uh, in that area. Exactly. So in Chicago, they have a couple of these called American Science and Surplus. And it's kind of like that for all the geekery stuff. You go in there and they have, like, honestly, transistors and capacitors and everything by the bin. And you can put together the little light emitting diodes that you're going to put along your, your uh, Halloween costume so you look like a board or something like that, you know, and they have all kinds of medical instrumentation and, and thermometers and whatever. That's one of those places where you kind of come to, it's like, I, I can't believe I just spent like two hours browsing here, but there's yeah. so much cool stuff. Yeah. It's really yeah. A, a geek's paradise. It's wonderful. <laughs> What's that called again? American Science and Surplus. Um, I think uh, I've ordered something from them back in the day. It sounds yeah, they, they so have familiar. A mail order catalog, exactly. And I, like I said, I, I know that there's one that's out maybe like either Batavia or Fox River, Fox Lake. That that I think that's their main one, their biggest place. But um, that when people, when we would geek it up at Mensa meetings and talk about, you know, I'd love to do that, but where would I find that? Someone in the group would immediately say, American Science Surplus has like everything. If you need a weather balloon, if you need a, you know what I mean? They've got everything. Everybody should get a weather balloon at a some weather point. Balloon. I mean... <laughs> so, so that was my, my excitement. Uh, what, what has been happening for you these last couple of weeks? Uh, I've been, uh, well, work's been crazy, but I've been, uh, uh, you know, you came out, you saw, we got our, our building that's falling down. Uh, yeah. We've been cleaning that out to get it torn down. We got a quote to tear it down and just outrageous. So yeah. I'm like, okay, wait, if we move things out and get rid of a bunch of stuff ourselves, that should lower the cost a bit. And if we just let the winner take care of it, it'll probably be knocked down. So <laughs> we might cut down the cost. And so really the funny thing is on the nerd aspect, my father has a lot of old machinery that I've had to figure out what it is and what it does. And is it running? And if not, what do I need to do to fix it? Right. So I'm not to sell it. How do you even describe it? So those who might be interested in it's a combine harvester. Oh yeah. Whatever. Oh yeah. yeah. Cause okay. I mean, when I go out there and he's got an old, like um, rainbow vacuum hooked up to this, what used to be a computer or somebody's, you know, desk. And it's got this thing sticking up out of it that used to be the metal part from, you know, the, the, the back end of a car. And then there's some other, motor hooked up to it and i'm like i have no idea what that you know i'm like casually turning it on and like what's it do to to figure start this. flailing at me is it yeah. Gonna <laughs> yeah the rototiller doesn't work well let's learn a little bit more about small engine repair which you know is geeky in itself because i'm not right. a big engine guy uh, but just what where's the gas flowing where's this you know that type of thing. that's been what i've been doing besides trying to get my computer together <laughs> That's, There's, that's my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I'll throw this out there. I, I and it's I don't know that many people have this perspective. So we're there at the Sonder place, and they have um, both a Roku box and Chromecast attached to their TV. Nice. So it's like, well, I can log on with my stuff from home. But then you go on, and there's like six people that have already logged in, and I'm like okay, this is what Netflix was complaining about, how they're losing money because they didn't scrub their credentials out of there. We went in and watched a couple episodes of Castle on Hulu because it was right there available. And, I'm, and depending on who had signed in, we didn't go looking, but I'm pretty sure that somebody had Netflix, somebody had HBO Max, somebody, you know what I mean? They had the premium channels. And I guess it's generous to leave that behind for others, but 
but then it's like there's got to be a time when you're at your home system and you're saying, hey, somebody just signed in from Philadelphia. You're like, oh, oh, I, I, I just did that. How am I going to go back and get rid of it now that I am? Home? I would bet. I would bet. And here, here, this is, I guess, our geek tip of the week. Mm-hmm. I bet most people don't even think about that or realize it. They just, oh, we can log in. They log in with their account and their account is, you know, ABC123. So, right. it's you know, and then they, they leave the next day and don't even think about it because they don't understand and realize, hey, you just gave everybody access to your stuff. That's right. Exactly. So it, maybe the reason I thought it was interesting because and not having ever done it outside of my home and then out in California where I made a point of bringing a Roku box with me, I hadn't seen how you really could leave those things kind of behind you. You know what I mean? That 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 your credentials stay in the box. So it uh I'm I'm it was very nice that we were able to do that without having to be Oh, I could swear that's what the password was, but it's not. So now, and as you know, when you're trying to do it on the TV, it's not just like typing it in again. It's that tortuous moving back and forth yes. with your little arrow keys on a remote. And when you don't get it wrong, it's like, I have a 24 character thing. I don't want to do well, it again. Mix, mix characters. Uh, yeah. yeah. But, but, yeah. but the, <laughs> that's the good thing about those boxes is they're so easy to pack up and carry, especially if you have like an express stick. It's literally a USB you plug in and the HDMI you plug in. And then you have your everything. It's already logged in. It's yours. I mean, you can take that with you everywhere. You know, forget about the premium stations that cost $25 for whatever at the hotel. I'm I'm inspired to do what you just said. You know, I I, I have like the Roku, Roku 4 premium, whichever one it is, costs like 99 bucks. Having the one besides we have to just take on the road with you wherever I go and having that that is got everything that I've already got set up in it and stuff like that. Yeah, that's it's very much uh, beyond cutting the cable. Now you actually carry your your wealth of stuff with you. You know, that's a good yeah. idea. So, yeah. And, you know, you know tablets and everything, laptops, and, you know, most people don't think about just have an HDMI cable with your uh, laptop and plug your laptop into the hotel TV. Most right. of the time, you know, you, yeah. you'll be able to. Yes, I, I have to, my MacBook Air, it doesn't have a straight HDMI, but I have a little adapter and it works just fine everywhere I go. Of so, course, you, know. you have to be different. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, yeah, well, what it is, is I have to step down the good one on the Apple to the crappy HDMI standard. <laughs> yes, that's exactly, uh, yeah, okay. That's right, that's uh, right yeah. That's <laughs> so, so speaking of all this tech, uh, you mentioned some nature show that has a lot of cool tech. What What's up with that? And so... Um, one of the things we discovered, you know, we love David Attenborough oh, and yeah. he's done like planet earth and planet earth two and blue planet, a, a series of them for the BBC. He, he used to do all the I, stuff for school. It, exactly. That the voice is so distinctive and soothing yes. and so forth. Well, it seems that every two years they put out another one. There's one, maybe it was like dark planet where they were using ultra low, uh, light sensitive cameras to be able to capture like here's the rhinos like we thought they were solitary creatures at night they get together and have a little rhino party you know that kind of thing so they have one the latest one is called something like you know um, seven worlds one planet it focuses on each of the various different continents and the specific things that go on there that nowadays they're getting incredible footage because they have devices they have drones that can follow things you're not worried about spooking the herd of wildebeests with your you know jeep or something like that if you can just send in a drone so they've they've just got and, and of course with uh telephoto lenses or lenses that you can just get real close they just show like up in the canopy of the cloud forest down in is it ecuador peru i think right oh, they yeah. show um uh, orangutans and and here they are seeking out you know the the juiciest little baby avocados and like how did they get this footage it's just amazing they they had one where um i i i think i mentioned before i'm fascinated by iguazu falls it's a huge confluence of rivers right on the border between argentina and brazil if i remember correctly and um, it's it's an amazing amount of water coming in, and there's ways to get close to it on on you know paths out onto promontories. That I just want to be there and feel that power and that overwhelm of the the mist and the noise and everything. So, so that's you you got your VR goggles. We need that in VR. And, <laughs> exactly. And those falls were the basis of the falls that they used in episode one, Phantom Menace, Star Wars. The, the okay, falls because it is. There's so much water and so many different places that it's coming from that yeah. it's, it's other planetly, you know, yes. otherworldly. They, they actually used seven different falls that they composited into that okay. movie. 
<laughs> so what was cool about this was they have, so here's all the waterfalls, just ton, tons of water. There's a species of swifts that lives on the cliffs behind the waterfalls. They go through the water without getting just battered senseless, make it to the other side, and, and uh, they nest there and then have their babies. And then the, the baby's first experience of not a curtain of water closing out the world, but having to follow the parents through to go out into the rest of wow. Brazil is to go through this waterfall. And what a, I can't imagine that. You That's know what I mean? You're, crazy. You're, 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 you're coddled for your first, you know, two years before you're taking a step. These guys are like just weaned, fledged, whatever the right bird term is. And then they got to go, okay, time to take my life into my hands. Booge, right <laughs> into the waterfall. <laughs> fact that they could get so close with these drones that they were able to show the birds like struggling and then emerging from the curtain of water and I, I, I don't know so many other examples of here's how they can show here's too many walruses like 500,000 walruses all on this one beach and they're all on top of each other and then here come the penguins who have to make it through those walruses to get to the ocean that they have to go to feed to bring back and so just you're right in amongst these walruses with these penguins and like they're little gen 2 penguins so they're hopping on top and they're incredibly agile and as, as you know as they run away they're making time but they look like they're going to get crushed by walkers you know i just i was laughing in amazement at they got incredible footage that i just couldn't have imagined they go under the ice in antarctica to show the entire world that's underneath there they got all these weird um uh, plants and anemones oh, and like cool. starfish that you know when you speed the uh, uh film up it really looks oh man it's a nightmare to see how many things with too many appendages and tentacles are like moving and fighting and you know what i mean like this one's gonna like a jellyfish trails its tendrils down to capture things but then something actually captures it and then a bunch of them team up on him and pull him down it's like how, how who would have imagined they would have wow. ever captured that Oh man, I just so uh, again to geek it up. The technology that's enabled us to capture those things so that it's not a human element that automatically is kind of clumsy and maybe scatters them for fear of human contact, but that they've been able to integrate themselves into multiple environments. Some of them quite hostile. We haven't flown into volcanoes yet. I don't know how well a drone can handle that before it overheats or right. whatever. <laughs> but so close to so many, it's just fascinating so much about like how we get to know the world is it's not only a matter of hey we can watch it but as our instrumentation gets better and better we go deeper we can see smaller and smaller we can see here's the scales on a chameleon and here's how they really do have almost like individual control of every yeah. single chromata cell you know what i and just i i love that we're getting more and more knowledge and experience of those cool things so That's what's what, that streaming on um that might be hbo max I think. okay uh, okay when, the well, HBO is Max is phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, we we have um, Netflix, Amazon Prime, and HBO Max. I think we we let Paramount go, and we have Hulu because it's free. And in fact, HBO and Hulu because we get our Amazon, no, our AT and T and our Verizon. So uh, right, between those right. four, it's like wow, I have four infinities of things to watch. I'll never run out of streaming. So I, you know, I still get certain things via Netflix disc because they're just not available anywhere. Right, but. The Roku box, you can also say, Well, I'm looking for Dexter. Where's it available? Oh, here's for free. Here's the first episode is free, but then you got to pay. Here's the subscription price. So, uh, the reason that when you ask what it's on, I always don't always know because I sometimes follow just kind of a well, I wanted to watch it and I followed the twisted path to get in. Yep, <laughs> you yep. know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah, that, cool. That, well, I'll have yeah. to look that up. We'll put a link because now I'd like to sit and watch it I, I i don't watch enough of the documentaries anymore i used to you know, i get sucked into them once i do but then yeah. i i just haven't uh that you know the last couple of years with all the stuff colin did i i tend to catch paranormal this that and the other thing and that's just kind of been yeah. the rut i've been in so time yeah. to get off of that we, we really try to mix it up enough so that hey if we've watched too many documentaries let's go watch some action movie let's go watch some baking let's you know what i mean let's go watch a comedy special so and also i it's kind of funny i i, I can't believe i didn't mention this we got home in time to go see on sunday night doug stanhope a great stand-up comedian 
really it can be very very acidic he tells the truth really wittily but very he tells big truths and sometimes that really gets in people's face about it last night we saw michelle wolf who was a big hit from like a couple of years ago in either Montreal or Toronto and now continues to build her career. And then this coming Sunday night, Labor Day weekend, we're seeing Dave Attell. So in a week, we're going to see like three great stand-up comedians. Nice. And that's what a one, I mean, that's our favorite night out. You know what I mean? To go and just laugh your butt off for two hours, sip a couple Diet Cokes in the company of all these other people that there's hardly anybody ever at a comedy club that doesn't want to be there. You go to a ball game or various other things and half the people there are like, I'm going to get another beer or a hot dog and I'm going to talk to my friends. But most people, they're really there to see the act on stage, you know? Right. So I just, we, we love that laughter. We love hearing that. The, seeing that people can be that witty after you've seen, I've seen 60 years worth of comedy, and yet they're still finding ways to surprise me, to come up with a new twist on a joke and commentary on modern times and stuff. It's it. So we had then wonderful times, both Sunday and Monday nights. Nice. It's just good stuff. Hilarity is the the... the um, Pickwick and Frolic, the club we have in town, it's like they have a little clip now before that of all the comedians going, I just was at Hilarity. What a great club. So it really is. It's kind of cool to have one of the best things in the world right in Cleveland. Every comic loves to work Hilarities. So that's nice. kind of cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anything that's going between New York and Chicago, they're going to stop in Cleveland because Nick Costas, Costas uh, it does a, such a great job. And the crowds here are always good. <laughs> one of one of the guys makes a comment. You know, uh, comedian comedy always does good in cities where people have no hope. <laughs> so I was like, well, that's kind of a left-handed compliment to Cleveland. <laughs> right. And nonetheless, we don't take ourselves too seriously here. And right. So there's right. not a lot of going on of airs. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of so. So, so something <laughs> I've been doing uh, is starting to promote the author stuff i've been on a couple podcasts recently um Wonderful. and this is here's the geek thing and you, you'll appreciate this is uh to gain some interest from some of these because some of them are pretty booked and they like really vet who they want to be on there but the ones i've the last couple of weeks that i've gotten i put on there that uh something along the lines in my bio of hey you know what he owns a wolf so why wouldn't he write fantasy and every single one's like okay wait you own a wolf and they want to talk about the wolf, which gets me that in the door, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's kind of that it fits that's in tagline. That's a good little fun fact to know. And yes. Tell. Good for yes. You. Cool. And, and, you know, I think kids too, you tell kids that you have a wolf and, the, oh, you know, and, the, the, and the, <laughs> that's a good in with that. So I'm like, okay, I, I'm going to use this and that's gotten in. Yeah, so yeah. I've been on a couple of podcasts and then this weekend, uh, is the Pes Pennsylvania RG that I'm giving my uh, talk at uh, practicing again, uh, once again with, you know, Mensa friends to get good feedback, but I've also got my card game. I don't, did I talk, I mentioned to you the uh, card game, the elf uh, Christmas yes. day. Yeah. So exactly. I finally, it clicked one day on like, Oh, here's the element that's not been working that here's a way to make it work and uh, stuff. So I talked to some of our friends and we're going to play test it. The hopefully improved final version that's actually playable. Okay. So, so are you weekend. printing your own cards? Are you 3d printing little figurines? How are you? Uh, yeah, I've, I've got, next I, I'll put a link in. There's a great program on steam called card creator by Pixelato, And okay. it's, really okay. they've been improving it working on it and it's a really great program for making card games they have layers so you can have your pictures and your uh, uh outline to the card and you set it up so everything goes in its own spot and it, so it's easy to keep things aligned and looking good yeah, colors um, and logos and where, where the info that's very cool okay. yeah yeah and that they just started coming out with another one called tabletop creator to help you create board games so wow. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, really? So, and it, it prints out and I, and you just got to cut them and stick them in sleeves and you can play. Uh, so okay. it's really nice and easy to iterate. You know, oh, okay. That didn't work. Make notes, change the cards, print out the new version. Uh, it works exactly. really well. And by play testing, you get a better, better idea of, is it balanced now? Is it, does it move forward? Is it the hour and a half that I want instead of the 10 hour that I want? Right. Or whatever. 
Right. Okay. So yeah, it's going to be a busy weekend. I'm looking forward to it. You know, get through all the work stuff this week so I can relax on the weekend. And, you know, exactly. PA, they always have the book sale. So I've got a bunch of books to take and I'll probably come home with just as many. Uh, exactly. And they're doing karaoke Saturday. So I'm like, oh, do I really want to do karaoke? I, I, Maybe. Yeah, you, do. <laughs> you know, there's always enough free alcohol. So yeah, I'll probably end up on the karaoke stage. <laughs> okay. It's been honestly eight, 10 years since we've been in Pittsburgh because Colleen's family uh, often has a, a, a get together, usually on like Sunday. And so it's right in the heart of when we want to be out of town. And right. then after a while, I've stopped even trying to hold that weekend free because there is so much th that we, we know we're already taken for there. So it's almost always there's concerts, there's, uh, you know, we'll go to a, the last baseball game of the season. We'll have a nice, like, I don't know, on our own, kind of a relaxed, but get together with family, but no longer the, the Mets up. Pittsburgh almost threw a very nice gathering. It's just it's hard for us to get away from that. Yeah, so it is a, a time. it's so, a rough weekend. I mean, I understand why they do it because it's a nice three day thing and it's a pretty big RG. It's not as big as Chicago, obviously, but good right. size. And I've missed a few things like I. I, the Canfield Fair is always that weekend. And I like oh, the Canfield yeah. Fair. The air show is that weekend. I like the air show. So and we almost so, always hear it right here because we're near the lake. Yeah. yeah. That. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, but I, you know, it gives me a good chance to play my game and test it and people willing to give me feedback and enjoy it and a uh, chance to do my talk, uh, play some yeah. games yeah. myself, you know, and no driving. So, okay, you might get a little tipsy. You know, last time, uh, you know, I was heading to bed at like 1 a.m. and somebody drugged me into a hearts game. So, <laughs> you know, you know how that goes. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember that on any number of times, Colleen and I were up way late because when you know you don't have to be like really back to the world until Monday, you can really have fun on Friday, Saturday and Sunday night. Yeah. And know that you're going to have time to recover. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know exactly. So we, we not lately, but I don't know. I've been going to RG since like early 90s. Easily for the first 10, 15 years, we saw dawn either Friday or Saturday night, we just were playing games and, and it wasn't the game. It was you're with your friends and you're laughing your butt off for hours and hours and just you know, one another game. Sure. Some people swap in and out at the table, you know, you get some fresh blood and stuff, but, or to, I don't know when, when, when we were a place that has like, Oh, they have a little ice chest or, or, you know, a freezer that has all the ice cream you might ever want. That's bad. One an hour. One an hour. <laughs> well, and some of the programs look really cool. They have like a mime workshop they're doing. They're doing a juggling workshop. They're going to have service dogs wow. in. Uh, I think okay. Bill and Bria had that the one year. They had the service dogs. They demonstrated uh, the training and that. They're going to have the zoo in to show zoo in. You know, all things. Again, the topics range all over the board. Yeah. And I think someone's doing a knitting thing, you know, so that's that's right. there's almost all the stitching bits for the people that are doing either knitting or crocheting and stuff i remember seeing one about uh rescued greyhounds not service dogs but where they when they let them be done at the track they don't destroy them they get they they uh um, adopt them out yes and so a whole bunch of people brought in their fun greyhounds and I, I was still a little bit weirded out because they're they're so built for running that they have like no extra mass on them yeah and they're standing there kind of like shaking because i think they're cold and like that, that's not a, it makes me nervous to see the doggy nervous. I want them to be like relaxing and sitting on the floor and people giving them a belly yeah. rub. I want them looking like they're getting ready to bolt. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I don't know why that image stayed with me, but I felt bad that he has no body fat. Yeah. I do not suffer from that problem, you see. <laughs> and so, and, so. <laughs> and I, I think uh, Bill is doing a talk on science fiction in the 20s because the theme is back to the 20s, finally getting back into our 2020s. So Got Bill, it. I think, Got is it. doing 1920s science fiction talk. So That's cool. I, I always think it was at Pittsburgh that I met William Tan. You know, a uh, uh, like guy that was a uh, uh, Bill told me, after, you know, after I heard him talk, he was also like, let me tell you even more about what this guy was like. He's the name that you don't know amongst the top 10 guys that were writing back in the 30s, 40s, 50s. Wow. You know what I mean? So it, it uh, he Bill is an incredible resource. He's just, and he's such pleasant company and he's so yeah. knowledgeable, such a dry sense of humor. It's like, that's one of the biggest things that I miss is not getting a chance to say hi to Bill and Bria. So yeah. Oh, and oh. and that, that's and David Shirley I, and all my other friends. And, <laughs> yeah. And, and Paul and Marty, uh, yeah, there's yes. and Dave, his whole family, you know, that's right. Um, one of the things I, I've said since I met Bill is I appreciate authors because authors can be like 
celebrities and rock stars. When you read a book and you love it and you love all their books and you meet them, you're like, oh my God, it's so great. You know, you, you have that feeling, <laughs> but, it, but they're not, they don't get that as much as celebrities and they're much more down to earth. They'll talk to you. And Bill, I mean, I remember calling, we went to Bill's house and, you know, he's got books all over the place. He let us borrow books and, wow. you know, uh, it was just really great. And then Colin was in high school and the kids were all talking about some of their favorite authors. Some of his friends said, oh, yeah, I love um, uh, w William Keith. And Colin goes, oh, yeah, I know him. I've stayed at his house. And they're like, what? <laughs> and they were just flipping out about it. <laughs> but Bill, is you'd never know it going down the street at who he is and stuff. But he's been writing for 35 some years or whatever. Exactly. And he gets in the top 10 list. He's on the USA Times. But you can approach him and talk to him and he'll take the time. There's no uh, egotistic feeling to him. No, I'm better than you at all. Absolutely. That's if, if anything, you know, it's one of those, as you know, the way those things work is there's usually meals and everybody just kind of takes whatever I almost always get a chance to sit for one of the meals with him just so by the way we share the same birthday so oh. we birthday brothers have to catch up and wish each other well because it's august and then we usually and so just that you know it it one of those things where um i often have i like going to programs i like learning new things so i finish with whatever i'm doing and i run off and he must be the guy that the most times i've said why don't we just keep talking? I don't really need to see the skunk rescue thing. I really want to <laughs> yeah. sit here with you for a moment. <laughs> well, I'll <laughs> tell you, one of Colin's fondest RG memories, yeah. He we had been going to RGs for a while, a couple of them, uh, Chicago and some of the other ones. One of his favorite memories was when he got to sit down with you and talk like three and a half hours of comic books. And exactly. there was a whole table of people, that. but like you actually <laughs> engaged him. And he's like, I, it was great. He was talking to me and not ignoring me and stuff. So that's one of his fondest <laughs> memories, talking to Alan that's, that's about very comics. sweet. I remember uh, just that, you know, given that I'm, how much is there? 30 plus years between us. He 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 knew all kinds of stuff. So it really was a conversation. It wasn't just, let me, you know, let me try all about comic books, you know, man. <laughs> it, it, it was fun to hear what he most liked, what his favorite memories were, and my trying to share my favorites. And then like um, rediscovering, you know, sometimes there's things that you don't think about for 20, 30 years until someone brings it up. It's like, oh, that was a great storyline. Yeah. So that was really a pleasure for me as well. That's yeah, cool. yeah, he enjoyed that. <laughs> so got a good RG and, you know, it's 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 almost winter time. It's almost our holiday time. So yeah. I, sure I told you, uh, sorry, uh, I was going through the building and my father uh, used to do wood cutouts that he put in the yeah. yard so i've yes. been pulling those out because we want to save them before the building collapses and i put all the halloween ones out and i've got like 50 halloween wood cutouts in the yard and like a whole pumpkin patch and That's you know, cool. just all sorts so you're of, one stuff. of the houses that people like slow down on the road to see all the stuff in your yard you i know? hope so i hope That's so i mean cool. he put a lot of work into those <laughs> yeah. uh it drives me crazy because now i've got to find a place to put them all but right. You know, they do look kind of cool. Yeah, I am. I am looking forward, obviously, to, to Halloween. You know, that's that's the biggie for the year for us. Um, we had to miss the AG. I think we're going to we will make it almost certainly to Cincinnati. Sometimes I've gone to that solo. It used to be that December was a really, really tough month for Colleen because she had so much year end clo closings and so many clients that pushed it to them. Wow. He has. Uh, regularly work with them now to not have it be that everybody gets their holidays spoiled by handling things on December 23rd. You know what I mean? So really might be that we'll both be there together, but that's another one like Dayton, like Columbus, like others that it's, it's uh, you know, a couple hundred people. So many of the people have become my friends over the years. So it's just so nice to catch up with everybody over the course of time. The usual great programs, great games. I give a program, whatever else it might be. It's just the Mensa weekends are still a delight to me, yeah. even though sometimes they're um sometimes they feel a little bit the same you know what i mean there's not enough necessarily different about them but i like that thing you know it's like i don't stop riding roller coasters because i've ridden it a couple of times i still like that feeling and so right. I, you know well I mean? it, you know no matter what you can always sit in hospitality talking with somebody about some topic uh, right. And there's always games to pull up and play. There's always somebody around the play. That's one of the things with uh, Weem in Chicago when I've gone to that is I, I, I walk around the room and it'll take me an hour just to see what all games I'm like, okay, well, there's only 45 games I need to play before I leave, you know, <laughs> but then exactly. someone will just come up to you and say, hey, we're getting ready to play such and such. You want to join us? 
you know, that's, that, <laughs> I love it. You know, sure. I've never played this. That's okay. Have a seat, you know, exactly. and that's the great thing, not only about most Mensons, but game players too, you that's know, true. They're very you, welcoming. They're very much like they don't keep it to themselves. They do like, Hey, come over here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Exactly. Once in a while, Colleen and I would go in with the intent of like, let's have a quick game of Scrabble. And then we don't end up playing by ourselves because we want to, people ask us to join. Of course we want to join. You know what I mean? So yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah learn lots of new games that way too so yeah yeah oriel is wonderful about that whatever his latest favorites are he'll always be like come and let me explain this to you we'll be playing in minutes and we'll have a couple good rounds you know that yeah kind of stuff. so there's a couple well, of people here next here. year they're doing the uh the uh the games thing in columbus um yes. meant to select stuff um mind so mind games. Exactly. mind games thank you duh i couldn't think of it in my mind uh but <laughs> So I'm really looking to want to do that next year. I missed it when it was in Canton uh, and, you know, maybe some volunteer time to help out a little bit and stuff. So exactly. looking forward it, to that too. Yeah. In fact, I'll, I'll be helping with that one. Uh, you know, it, um, um, James Nelly and his, I think, I know for sure him and maybe his wife are the um, co-chairs and, and he said, Hey, would you be one of my day chairs so that, you know, I'll, I'll be the guy that like make sure the games get put back in alphabetical order. Make sure that the uh, signs of uh, food combat <laughs> that people actually clean up their tables a little bit. It's it'll be harder for me to fit in my thirty plus games, but I like him a lot. He's always been a very good guy, and so I kind of want him to not burn out. I want him to have a nice time yeah. too. And so yeah. uh, we'll, we'll be playing that that'll, game for sure. That That'll be an episode then. We'll have to talk about some of the games, what we're allowed we to talk do about. A live podcast from there. We really oh, could. Right. That's... We talked about that in the hallway in between game sessions. So what'd you exactly. play? What'd you like? Okay, gotta go. <laughs> yeah. True. And then we'll just spring it all together. Exactly. Instead of being a big hour, we should do little dispatches. You know what yes. I mean? Like every, every once in a while, just I'll 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 hold the microphone for you and you can give me your here. What's your latest three good ones? Oh, boom, boom, boom. I don't think there's any restrictions on um saying what you liked if if it's just like out to the world i think you're not supposed to try to influence other people at the event while you're playing yeah but hopefully i mean of course anybody could just watch it while we're there i don't know it might be one of those things that we just have to ask permission right you know yeah I mean? you know the, the downside is that we'll talk a little bit about the games the upside is that more people will know about this cool thing going on because we have, you know, a couple thousand listeners, we don't tune in, you know, that kind of thing. Right. So right. We'll, yeah, we'll and I'll, I'll probably do a few clips and stuff this weekend, put it up on YouTube, at least, uh, okay. you know, like the service dogs, things that I, you know, other geeks are interested in those little yeah. clips sometime are cool. Yeah. It's, it's funny. I, I, I took lots of photos of the, the pillow up is full of murals and yet, once I got home, I immediately started to work on other stuff and I haven't done, except for a little write-up, I haven't really done, here's the Philadelphia experience and maybe I still will post some of those things because that's one of the fun things is sharing that and then yeah. hearing everybody else chime in with, oh yeah, I was there and you know what I mean? Everybody well, loves to talk about travel. So, we should put it into like a slideshow with the Rocky theme. <laughs> <laughs> we, You know, it, it's kind of funny. That would be like the most turnaround, the quickest turnaround I've ever done for a, a, a thing would be, hey, in October, I'm going to do, here's a trip we went on in August. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. All okay. right. Well, hey, man. You have been, been listening to the, the Relentless Geekery, Geekery Podcast. Come back next week right. and join Alan and Steven's conversation on Geek Topics of the Week.